In today's video, we're gonna be attempting another dirty pour with epoxy resin, but this time I'm gonna change up a couple of things. So for starters, one of you guys reached out to me and suggested that I use one of these. This is a five channel pouring cup and hopefully it's gonna mean that our colors will come out more evenly than the last time. And secondly, a lot of you had suggested that I wait with my resin before pouring it into my molds and let it sit for about 20 to 30 minutes and then pour them into my mold and that way the colors will be a bit more separate and more um, more defined in the project. So with all that being said, that's what I'm going to try today and I'm going to quickly go mix up my resin and I'll be right back so we can get started. Okay guys, so I've gone ahead and mixed up my epoxy and in this video we're going to be making some pendants again and if we have enough resin at the end, I'll also be making a resin coaster. I really want to see this technique done in a piece that's a bit bigger than a pendant. I've gone ahead and also chosen my colors and this time I'll be using this vibrant pink, sapphire blue, bluish teal, and as for my last two colors, I'm going to be using white and gold from the Let's Resin set I used in my other video. Before I forget, the epoxy resin I'll be using is from Let's Resin since it worked really well the last time. I've mixed up six ounces of resin and we'll be using just over one ounce of resin for each color. Another thing I just realized that I'm also doing differently from the last time is I'm going to be using liquid resin pigments instead of only mica powders so it will be interesting to see if the effect will be different. I'm also curious to know whether the micas will be more dominant in the pieces or if the liquid resin pigments will be. For the resin liquid pigments, I put five drops of the sapphire blue and ten drops of the pink in the resin. As for the mica powders, I put way too much. Um, you only need a tiny amount of mica to get a gorgeous tint, but sometimes it's hard to see how much I've scooped up with my phone in the way while I'm recording, so yeah. <laughs> One pro tip while using mica powders in resin is to dissolve the mica powders first in a little bit of 91% or higher rubbing alcohol. Mica powders can clump up while you're mixing them in the resin, and I found that dissolving them in the alcohol first fixes that problem. I know, I know, I'm sorry if I sound like a broken record about this tip, but you guys, I get lots of DMs or comments complaining about people who are trying to dissolve their mica powders in the resin and all they get are lots of clumpy bits. So I really like sharing this tip so then for anyone who's watching who's new to resin, they know this. But if you don't have the rubbing alcohol, you can also mix the micas in a little bit of resin first and then mix that into the rest of the resin and that way you're not creating so many air bubbles trying to dissolve the micas. Once my colors were mixed up, it was time to put them into the split cup. Now you can mix your pigments in the resin in the split cup, but because I wanted to make sure that I had one ounce of each color, I mixed them in these smaller one ounce cups. Then I set my split cup aside and on my watch I put a 15 minute timer but ended up leaving the resin for longer because at the 15 minute mark the resin was still too fluid. Here's a quick time lapse of the resin just sitting here and it's so cool seeing the resin's movement as the air bubbles are popping. You can especially see it in the resins that I mix with the mica powders. The resin ended up sitting for over 30 minutes and to my surprise the cup was actually really warm when I picked it up so I quickly set up my mold so I could pour my resin before the resin had a chance to flash cure. Now comparing it to the last time, pouring the resin out of the split cup was a bit trickier. Because there's five different resins flowing out at once, it was harder for me to concentrate on my circular motion with my hand, and you guys will see that in the flow of the resin. Another thing I noticed was that the blue resin seemed to come out first before the other colors, and I'm wondering if it had anything to do with the angle that I was holding the cup in. I'm really hoping that this pour doesn't turn into a muddy mess, especially since I didn't get the circular movement I wanted, but hey, this is how we learn and figure out what works and what doesn't. In the end, I only ended up filling up three of the pendant cavities because I wanted to make sure I had enough resin for the coaster mold. By the time I got to the coaster mold, I had figured out how to move my hand a bit and just look at how pretty the resin is going. I really, really hope the resin stays this way and it looks like this on the other side. I just love how you can see all the different colors. Then with a popsicle stick, I gently lifted the mold so the resin could spread to the other side and then covered it up with some food containers so no dust particles would get in. And now we wait for the resin to cure. It's now the next morning and I've come into my craft room because the plan was to mix up another batch of clear resin, pour it on top of these pieces so that they could be level with the mold. 
But I honestly don't think I'll be doing that. Um, I'm not sure if the resin moved much in the night, but as you guys can see, the blue and the gold have just overpowered the resin pieces. And I'm not too sure. <laughs> I'm not too sure that I like it. So what I'm going to quickly do is I'm going to quickly demold these and then see what we've got because as of right now, um, I'm thinking this one was a fail. goodness what happened to you <laughs> oh this piece was not very nice it looks way cooler on this side than this side but again it did that really cool texture with the mica powders but one thing I'm noticing is what's happened with the teal the teal is pretty much gone and there are some hints here and as well here but in the other pieces it's pretty much non-existent you wouldn't even know oops you wouldn't even know that I put teal in there and that's I'm actually kind of disappointed because I was hoping for more teal that is one of the colors that I really wanted to be seen but the other colors just swallowed it up and wow this is really cool and really interesting and although i'm not loving the results from this pour, i am loving the fact that this technique can give us different results every time we do it especially if we change up the colors i am wondering though if mixing in the liquid resin pigments had anything to do with the results i got but yeah i'd love to know what you think be sure to comment down below do you think this was a fail which pour did you prefer this one or the one in my last video i will link it at the top just in case you haven't watched it yet but yeah, on the bright side, cleaning up the pour cup should be pretty satisfying. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something. If you did, please give this video a big fat thumbs up. If you want to see other resin techniques I've tried, be sure to check out the videos that are popping on screen now. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.